after witnessing a not so great start to 2018, aluminum, that's the commodity in question right now, is once again powering up ahead. It's been clocking almost gains of about 8% in the last four days alone. So what kind of a role do US sanctions play on the industry supply demand dynamics? And could aluminum then continue shining? Mubina, what is your sense? Well, for one, it's a metal that you really can't avoid. You know, you use it everywhere. It's used in your cars, it's used in refrigerators, it's used even in the tin can from which you drink uh, your soft drinks. So, uh, but what's important and why exactly are US sanctions going to impact the aluminium demand supply scenario is firstly because uh, Russell, for one, has about 6% of the global aluminium production. It's about 14% of the global aluminium production if you exclude China. So that basically makes Russell the second biggest producer of aluminium in the world. That's the status that it occupies. But with these hefty penalties and with these hefty sanctions that have been imposed by the United States on this aluminium producer, it means that, you know, the operations of Russell will certainly be impacted and it has already spoken about credit obligations for now being on hold due to these hefty penalties by the United States. So we are talking about 6% of global aluminium production being in a limbo. But what are the other factors that are really adding luster to this? Well, for one, aluminium inventory, X of China, has been at the lowest level in the last seven years, which means supply is still a bit, um, you know, precarious. China companies that are using domestic alumina have seen profits halving from 1,091 per ton uh, on yuan basis to 541 per ton, which means that the restarting of operations may be a bit slower than expected. And alumina as well as thermal coal prices have started taking, seeing an uptick as well. So that is something that does pass on to aluminium prices too. And now finally, we've also seen Brazil's Albras, which is of course procuring alumina from Elunort, that has also in fact halved production. So all those supply side issues. Now how exactly has aluminium moved in 2018? We've seen a downtick come by from 2275 to $1,978 per ton on the 3rd of April. But Take the calendar a little forward and post 3rd of April, it's just been a one-way upward journey. So from the 23rd of March, where we started off with $2,050 per ton, it's fallen a bit to $2,004 per ton. It's moved to 3rd April's low of 1978. And then finally, from then, it's been six consecutive days of an up move for LME aluminium prices coming by. That should just come up on your screens. And there you have it. From 1,978 to 2009 to 2139 and finally in today's trading session aluminium prices reached $2,200 per ton that's the spike we are seeing whether or not this will continue going forward well I guess only time will tell and as to see how supply demand dynamics will shape up right and perhaps Mr. Rungta may have some of those answers Mubina thanks very much I think that graph g gives away the story quite perfectly for our viewers understanding uh, Mr. SK Rungta who's former MD aluminium and power business Vedanta and industry expert joins us to make sense of the rally that we're seeing in aluminum uh, as well as uh, some of the commodity um, base metals at this juncture but largely led by um, alumina and aluminum uh, at this juncture uh, mr rungta it's great to have you on the show thanks very much for taking out the time sir uh, us sanctions on one of the world's largest mm -hmm. aluminum uh, prices mm -hmm. has caused the metal to rally this significantly do you believe that this is simply a knee-jerk reaction and prices uh, may kind of settle or do you think that this rally might be exaggerated so may have some more legs yeah so when u.s imposed tariff on uh, aluminum imports of 10 percent we, uh, we did not see that kind of spike in the global aluminum prices but the u.s action uh, with regard to uc rusal which has been just now mentioned that they command 6% of global production and almost 13% of global production excluding China is a significant development which has happened which has really led to a lot of uncertainties and complexities in the global aluminium market. Now how it pans out is to be seen as to what happens to non-American customers of Rusal you know but right now everybody is cautious because there is a provision that the company or the individual which significantly adds to the transactions with UC Rusal can also be acted upon in future by US authorities. So obviously uh, the buyers, the banks which deal in US dollars, they will be cautious. And the fact is that last year 2017 was a good year for aluminum industry. Demand went up across regions 
including uh, you know significant rise in Chinese demand as well as Indian uh, as well as Europe and US. So we f saw a aluminum inventory coming down by almost a million ton in 2017, and with the without this action of US with respect to UC Rusal, it was expected that aluminum market will be in deficit in 2018 as well. So if it leads to disruption in supplies from UC Rusal on a long term basis, then certainly it uh, disturb the global aluminum supply and demand situation in favor of you know lesser supplies and more demand and obviously we can see uh, you know higher prices but right now the reaction is a short term reaction to this event because the short term supplies are going to be impacted and another factor which is going to really on a long term basis impact demand supply and prices of aluminum is uh, as to what happens in China because today they have more than 50 percent of global aluminum production and consumption. Now the, whether they follow up rigorously on the environmental issues which they have focused on aluminum industry as well as supply side management is to be seen. Now if that, that is enforced strictly and Chinese companies are not able to ramp up their production or th they have to cut their production as planned in terms of environmental regulations, then certainly it can be a sort of long drawn higher price scenario for aluminum. Mr. Rungta just wanted to understand how closely linked are aluminum, alumina and coal prices and what's the correlation really? Well, uh, you know, if you see globally, then, you know, uh, not many smelters are based upon coal and uh, there are other sources of energy like hydro or gas based power plants. But alumina, yes, there are many smelters which are not vertically integrated and, uh, 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 you know, they have to depend upon alumina imports for their smelter operations. To that extent, if alumina prices go up, then certainly it puts a pressure on uh, aluminum price. But we have seen in the past that there is not exact direct correlation of the same proportion on same percentage increase which happens in alumina as in aluminum. Like we had seen because of temporary disruption in a alumina production in Brazil, the prices of alumina got spiked last month, but corresponding increase had not taken place in the metal. But now due to other regions, the metal prices have moved up as you mentioned for the last five to six sessions and significant increase in one week's duration. So overall cost structure of the industry plays its part on determining the end product prices of aluminum. but it is not necessarily a correlation at all the time of the same proportion. Hmm. Uh, how closely do you think uh, are aluminum and alumina prices, uh, uh, I mean, give us a sense of how you're going to be looking at this price trend going forward uh, because um, one is expecting that at some point prices will stabilize. Do you hope to see that happen soon enough or the geopolitical scenario uh, is looking a bit um, it, tilting towards a further rise in prices. Now, as far as alumina is concerned, you know, uh, this price spike has been uh, due to, you know, temporary disruption in supplies. And uh, we, if we see the past history of prices of alumina, especially in last 12 months, there have been a lot of volatility. It, prices went up to as high as $475, $480 FOB and came back to $360, $370 and now uh, you know, the prices are up again, almost in $450 range. Now as far as metal is concerned, as, as I mentioned, it is too early to assess whether you know the capacity utilization imp impact to what extent will be there in UC Dusal. 
if there if us authorities are not very strict with regard to dealing of uc resale with non us uh, customers then of course they can find markets elsewhere in the world and overall supply may continue uh, to other markets of course uh, their supplies to us will be impacted so obviously they have to look for other customers and so do american buyers will have to look for other suppliers so that is why i think the scramble in the short run to look for supplies so that you know their production don't get impacted especially downstream aluminum producers but uh, longer range outlook will depend upon whether a russian producer is able to continue with their production and marketing elsewhere in the world or their supplies get impacted if their supplies get impacted and if china enforces their environmental laws then certainly supplies in 2018 will be less than the global demand right mr rungta we leave it at that thanks very much for joining us and making sense uh, of uh, what's happening with the commodity aluminum um, and what it means uh, for commodity companies uh, that uh, are in the business